Thank you for joining us at Hope Lutheran Church for worship online today. No matter when you're watching or where you're watching, I am just so thankful that you are here as we celebrate the fourth week in Advent. And so I hope you're having a wonderful Advent season, getting ready for Christmas. I know I am and my family are all set and ready to go. We're ready to celebrate the birth of the Christ child. However, with the current situations in Southern California and the increasing cases of COVID and the lack of hospital beds, we did feel like we needed to cancel our Christmas Eve in-person event. Unfortunately, we just didn't think that it was safe for people to gather during this time. But you know what? We will get through it together. And we will have our online Christmas Eve services as well. And it's really just going to be a short uh, service. It'll be great. Lots of carols, lots of singing, and hearing the story of Jesus' birth. So it's meant to have your family gather around, sing some of those favorite Christmas carols of yours together, and celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So if you would like and subscribe to our, our YouTube channel, that's going to help us reach more people with the good news of Christ. Let us now worship together in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Now let us confess our sin in the presence of God. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you. And for his sake, God forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained minister in the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare unto you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now let us light our Advent wreath. Gracious God, we thank you for this wheel of light that marks our preparation for Christ's Advent. We pray that you'll open our eyes to your presence so that we may see your glory all around us. In your holy and precious name we pray. Amen. And now please join us as we sing together. O come, O come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel that mourns in lonely exile here until the Son of God appear. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to you, O O come, O wisdom from on high, embracing all things far and nigh, in strength and beauty come and stay. Teach us your will and guide our way. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to you, O O come, O branch of Jesse, free your own from 
Satan's tyranny. From depths of hell your people save and give them victory o'er the grave. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to you, O safe the way that leads on high and close the path to misery rejoice rejoice Emmanuel shall come to you O some captive Israel that mourns in lonely exile here until the Son of God appear. Rejoice, rejoice, The good news for this, the fourth Sunday of Advent, according to Luke, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her, the good news of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God the Father and his only Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. There are some beautiful words in our good news lesson today. The angel greets Mary. Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. The angel. The angel says, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. When Mary wonders how she can be a mother, given that she is a virgin, the angel says, nothing will be impossible with God. And then Mary says, here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. 
We typically approach this story as something that happened 2,000 years ago, which is true. Something that happened to a wonderful young woman, which is true. And something struck way back there in time, having little connection with us, which is not true. The appearance of the angel to Mary did happen 2,000 years ago and was distinctive. The angel called Mary and, and only Mary would be the mother of the Lord. But listen again to, to the angel's words to Mary and ask whether the angel might be speaking those words to you and me as well. The angel said, greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. Could it be that the angel is speaking those words to you? While none of us will ever be the mother of the Messiah, God favors each of us in some way. Think about it. Each of us is God's beautiful creature in some way. God made each of us with a purpose in mind and has a special plan for you and me. God makes it possible for each of us to do something wonderful, something important during our lifetime. God calls each of us to some special calling, a calling that will remain unfilled if we fail to respond, but a calling that will leave the world richer if we do respond. Now, I'm not suggesting that God is calling each of us to something dramatic. I'm simply suggesting that if we live our lives in faith, God will honor our faith by doing some kind of wonderful work through us. It is quite likely that there is a child listening today who will grow up to be a missionary, or a business person, or a social worker, or a physician, or a carpenter, or even a pastor. It is quite likely that our children will grow up to be pillars of their communities, blessing everyone who comes in contact with them. It is also possible that you might call, your call might be simply to be a Sunday school teacher or to raise your children in Jesus or to show mercy to a homeless person or to cook meals in a soup kitchen or be a craft person whose work and words will show people what it means to be a Christian. It matters not what God calls us to do. It matters not whether it is great or humble calling. When we answer God's call, we can be sure that God will make something wonderful of us. Now listen carefully. I want you to hear these words as if God intends them for you, because I believe that God does. The angel says, greetings, favored one. God says that to you. Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. And so the Lord is. The Lord is with us any time we live in faith, any time we answer the call to which the Lord has called us. The angel says, the Lord is with you. The Lord will make something wonderful out of your life. The angel also said, do not be afraid. It is a fearful thing to be in the presence of God, but we need not be afraid for God is with us not against us. God loves us. God is willing to forgive us when we go wrong. God wants to forgive us. God loves us and shows us mercy. Do not be afraid. We need to hear those words. All of us are afraid at times, but also we go through fearing many things, most of which never happen. Do not be afraid. Churches need to hear those words. Sometimes churches can't find the courage to act. It takes great faith to do great things, but sometimes we feel like we have to have the money in the bank before we undertake any great challenge. Well, it is true that we need to be good stewards. It's not true that we should be fearful. Do not be afraid, the angel says. Good advice. When the angel told Mary what would happen to her, she said, how can this be? How can this be since I'm a virgin? Good question. No man had ever touched her. How could she have a baby? I would like to draw your attention to the angel's answer, to the angel's closing words. The angel said, for nothing will be impossible with God. I would like to encourage you to write those words on a note card and post it on your refrigerator this week. 
for nothing will be impossible with God. I would like for you to, to think about those words right now. For nothing will be impossible with God. Is that true? I believe it is. I believe that if God wants to do something important through my or your life, God can do it. God doesn't need me to be brilliant or eloquent. God doesn't need me to be top 10% super achiever. If I simply try to live faithfully, God will accomplish something wonderful through my and your life. God can do that in spite of our failings, in spite of our limitations, in spite of our sins. We might even not be aware of it. We might not learn about it until we get to heaven. But God will do great things through us if we heed God's call. For nothing is impossible with God. Believe that. It is true. Mary responded by saying, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with you according to your word. What a beautiful response. Mary was saying that she would walk in, in the direction that God pointed her, regardless of danger, regardless of her own desires. She was saying that she would do what God wanted without reservation without complaint. That is all that God needs from us too. Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. God has been, has God been tugging at your heart to do something special? Has God been nudging you in a certain direction? Has God challenged you to make a significant change in your life? If you would, if you want to do something important, something that will bless people, something that will survive through all eternity, just answer as Mary did. Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. If you do that, you can trust that God will make something wonderful of your life. God might not make you famous. God might not make you rich. God might not give you an easy life but you can be assured that God will give you a blessed life, a life, a rich life in God's blessings, and a life that blesses all those who know you. Here am I. That is all that God needs from us, our willing heart, our willing hands, our life of faith. This week, as we prepare for the, the giving of gifts on Christmas Day, let me invite you to give the gift, give God a gift yourself. Let me encourage you to be in prayer this week to learn what God would have you do with your life. Then let me invite you to respond as Mary did. Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it with me, let it be with me according to your word. Amen. Let us pray. Thank you, God, for giving us the gift of life at Christmas time, the gift of your only son Jesus Christ. Help us to take advantage of that gift and make a difference in our families, community, and the world. Here am I. Let it be according to your will. In Jesus' name, amen. In this time of COVID-19, when nothing is normal, Pastor Derek and I would like to thank Deborah Liv Johnson for helping us keep the tradition of singing O Come, O Come, Emmanuel during this Advent season. Thanks again, Deborah, for sharing your gift of music with us. Now go out in this week and make a difference.
once again for joining us for Worship Online. And thank you, thank you, thank you to those of you who've been so generous this year donating to Hope Lutheran Church for the many ways that you've given, for our staff gift, for the Angel Tree, where 270 kids in our East Valley received presents because of your generosity. God has truly blessed you. So thank you for being so generous with us. And if you'd like to help partner with Hope Lutheran Church, there are three ways you can do it. One, you can send in a donation to Hope Lutheran Church at 45900 Portola Avenue in Palm Desert, California, 92260. You can also text to give simply by texting 84321. And finally, you can go to hopepd.org. You'll find not only a way to give on hopepd.org, but all of the different ministry opportunities and Bible studies that we have. So go to hopepd.org today. And now let us continue with our service as we confess our faith found in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. God of power and might, fulfill your promise and come quickly to this weary world. Hear our prayers for everyone in need. Gracious God, all generations call you blessed. In this holy season, we pray for our neighbors of other denominations and faiths. Inspire the faith of their people. Cultivate understanding among us and strengthen us in love and service to our community. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Creator God, you scatter the proud. Everything we have belongs first to you. Bless and protect the seas, mountains, plains, forests, skies, and soils that surround us. Give us humility as we tend them. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Righteous God, you humble the powerful and lift up the lowly. We pray for the leaders of all nations that they amplify the voices of people in need. Guide all people entrusted with leadership to create societies in which everyone can flourish. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Compassionate God, you fill the hungry with good things and send the rich away empty. Nourish those who lack access to adequate food and nutrition. Bless the work of advocates, community organizers, and food pantries. Encourage others to provide for their neighbors in need. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Healing God, you pour out mercy to all who cry out to you. Surround everyone in need of healing in body, mind, or spirit. With your tender presence, especially this day, we pray for the Process family and Gabe Den Hartog. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Eternal God, you are faithful to the promises you made to our forebears. We give thanks for the lives of George Dostal, Mary Sturton, Rebecca Edinburgh, and Ken Vogel. Be with their families and friends and remind them of the promise of eternal life. Inspire others with their steadfast witness. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Draw near to us, O God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And as we are gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us praise our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial 
and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. And now may the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And before we go, I just want to remind you to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Helps us get more uh, reach out with that good news of Jesus Christ. So now to see the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and grant to you his everlasting peace. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve our Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.